Now, the one thing about the yield curve that people grossly misunderstand, and this is something that you see all the time on CNBC, I don't and, I use, and I use them as a placeholder for the financial media, but it's, not, it's certainly not restricted to them. But you have this thing that if, if in the morning you walk in and suddenly they focus on this relationship between the two-year and the 10-year, and you walk in and if the 10-year yields half a basis point more than the two-year, nobody th cares about it. And then if, at lunchtime, suddenly the 10-year goes half a basis point below the two-year and suddenly it's recession it. alert, right. recession signal, and the crawler is recession <laughs> warning flashing in the market. Yeah. And then, you know, at, uh, at, at an hour before the close, suddenly it goes a half a basis point positive again, and it's like, ah, oh, recession, recession. <laughs> you know, dodge that bullet. Yeah. But what actually matters is really overnight money to the 10-year, the 30-year. Uh, that's the Fed funds rate to the 10-year, the 30-year. And that did get inverted fully across the curve. For several and the, months. Uh, right. For several yeah. months. And usually it happens well in advance of the front edge of recession. So right. uh, the alarm bells that go off in financial media on the day that it happens are completely false signals because it, it's usually something like 18 months before the recession comes, maybe even, even two a, years. Well, there's a wide range, right? I mean, there is a range, the right. But what actually, yeah. what actually does happen before the recession, this is where the financial media gets it all wrong, is the curve steepens out before the front edge of the recession comes because the Fed starts to wake up to the fact right. that they're not really in sync with the market and they start easing. And they start easing usually too late. Mm -hmm. So what actually is more uh, predictable of a recession is first the inversion, yeah. then the deinversion, which is exactly where we are right it's now. true. The reasons why the inverted yield curve may not be as strong a signal, um, there are some, I think, some valid reasons, not to say it, Oh, it, no, it, no, 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 it's the opposite. Well, it, with, it, when rates the, are super well, low. Well, if the 10-year is depressed because of quantitative easing and because of negative yields. But they weren't doing quantitative easing. They were doing quantitative tightening this year when the curve inverted. So there was no quantitative but easing. The, but, the, I mean, the whole curve is much lower. I know, but the, my viewpoint is that the lower rates are, the more powerful an inversion signal is. Because let's just say we're old school. It's the good old days when interest rates were up at 8% on, uh, uh, on treasuries. Let's just say that the 10-year treasury yields 8 and the Fed funds rate is at 8.5%. I don't think it's imprudent to buy the 8% tenure if the inflation rate is below 4% and there doesn't seem to be any inflation pressure and your actuarial assumption on your pension plan is 7.5 and you can get 8 and, you, and your foundation, you can actually get 4 real. I get it why you would buy mm -hmm. the 10 year instead of, the, of, of overnight money or the 2 year. However, when the 10 year treasury yields 144 and overnight money is at 2 and a quarter, I think you're board certified insane to own the tenure because you, it doesn't satisfy any investment needs. It's below the rate of inflation. It's below anybody's real uh, earning needs, particularly after tax because it's also taxable. And what backs up my idea that the inversion signals more powerful than lower rates are is the case of Japan, which has not had inverted yield curves since 1991. Why? Because their rates are at nothing. Yeah. So there is no way that, uh, for me to believe that an, that an inverted yield curve means less at low interest rates. I think it means much more. So, uh, well, I, I, okay. and, and, we don't, Japan, and Japan has not inverted since 1991. They've had serial recessions. So the term premium being negative, that argument that, I mean, that's, it seems it's related to the yield curve, but the point that the, historically, if we didn't have a negative term premium they have now, the yield curve. I don't know. Be, that's, that's I feel like of, that's kind of that's a really ac some... that's a really academic argument. Yeah. I mean, I I, I don't like academic arguments. Yeah. I, 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 I like I like 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 Joe's, Joe Joe Lunchpail. You know, yeah. what do you want? Do you want overnight money <laughs> at two and a quarter, or do you want one point four on a ten year? The guy will be like, I think I'll take that two and a quarter. Yeah. Well, it's central. <laughs> yeah.